welcome to the world of art. Thank you for joining us today. We've got a fabulous show for you. We're going to be talking to the legendary Mary Shaw. She's amazing. Is I, it? She, she's just like one of those people that is so cool and she's experienced so much and she's got so much Vegas history. And she's been painting forever. Yeah. And, and yep. she's, she's got a lot of good information for you. We're also going to do one of our entrepreneur tips and one of our inspirational tips as well as a how-to. You yep. want to show them what we're doing today? Sure. This is a Yupo paper and alcohol inks and we're going to do a quick demo. Judy learned how to do this and, and just taught me. I This was one of my first ones, so it worked out pretty good. So, we've got an exciting show for you. Stay with us and we'll be right back. There are many insurance companies out there, but none can compare with McDonough Family Insurance. We take time to get to know each and every customer's individual needs. We want you to feel like part of the family and pride ourselves in protecting what matters most to you. Our agency offers all types of insurance, including life, auto, home, health, renters, and business owner policies. We strive for excellence each and every day to make sure that whatever situation arises in your life, you can feel safe, secure, and confident. One call to McDonough Family Insurance Agency will make your world brighter. Call us at 702-684-6989. That's 702-684-6989. We're always here with a smile and ready to help you. McDonough Family Insurance Agency, the company that cares. Welcome back and thank you for joining us today and especially for this segment because we have a wonderful, wonderful guest today. Her name is Mary Shaw and Mary is one of the legends of art in Las Vegas. I've taken a few classes from her myself and I'll tell you, she's fabulous. So Mary, welcome. We're so glad thank to have you, you here much. today. Yeah, we are so you. happy that you're thank here. You. We have to ask, I mean, how did you get started in Las Vegas? Well, we came to Las Vegas because my husband was a test site. And I don't know if any of you remember Cliff Segerblum. Oh, I worked for him. You did? That's amazing. Oh, how lovely. Well, okay. He was teaching on Monday mornings, and they asked me if I'd like to go, and I thought, oh, no, I'm not going to do watercolors. That's beneath me. But everybody said they were having such a good time. I said, oh, okay, I'll go. We were with him for 20 years on amazing. Monday mornings. Amazing. That's great. And, amazing. And uh, we were all very young, and we did a lot of partying, so we had to talk about all those things on Monday morning. <laughs> <laughs> and he tried to teach us. And now that we're older, we realize that he knew a lot that we that we missed because we were too busy with ourselves. <laughs> but yes, and his son now is quite important in politics. Yes, and he is. Yes, good. yes. Well, you've been a member of the Mesquite Club for a long time, too. Oh, and, yes. I'm and a, you one of the old there. timers, yes. Right. And I wrote the history of the Mesquite Club. Did you? When wow. they had their 100th birthday. Oh, my goodness. And. Uh, it's a lot about the people in this city and how small this city was, but they were always trying to have art of some kind, mm -hmm. and it was supposed to be a literary club. Oh, wow. But then Mrs. Stewart came to tea one day, the famous Mrs. Stewart, Yes. and she said no, that, that they were to change their name to Mesquite Club because it shades in the summertime, and you can use the, the trunk for heat in the winter mm -hmm. and then I don't know if you know it has a pod that uh, they make flour out of and there's a man here who's studying uh, plants and he he has made some of that flour amazing and that's why it's called mesquite because it was supposed to cover not only the arts but the news and uh, and charity that's amazing and, uh, well, and it's been there quite a long time, oh, too. Yes. Yeah, right. yes, and speaking of long time, this is the 50th year of the Nevada Watercolor Association. Oh, yes, yes. And you've been, uh, were you one of the founding members? No, I wasn't a founding member. There's only one alive, and that's oh. Betty Tours. Uh, but we're naturally terribly proud of it because it's doing very well after 50 years. As I was saying before, we're getting a lot of young people. And some of the shows are open to anyone in the city. Yes, that's great. One according to the bylaws. And then we ha we've had some really good shows. We've had them at Spring Mount, Spring, Spring Preserve. Spring Preserve, yeah. And we have had them at, my favorite is the libraries, because then kids get to see oh, them. Oh, yes. That kind and of I'm hoping they'll take, take up painting, you know. That's absolutely and, uh, yeah. 
Yes, and, and they have, uh, we're advertising it right now because they're having really good programs. They meet them the second worst Wednesday of the month. And they have very good workshops. They're bringing people in from other states and other countries. I've attended uh, quite a few of the workshops with the Nevada Water Colors well, then you Society. Know, yes. Yeah, and I've yeah. been to one. <laughs> You've been to one, yes. <laughs> yeah, but you're new to here, so I yes, yes, I'm still new to Las yeah. Vegas. So, yeah. Well, uh, I don't know if, uh, the the city has grown so. Yes. That I was laughing the other day that the stuff that we used to think was good would go in the garbage now, <laughs> and now the the class of paintings that are coming up are far superior what, than they were years ago. Now, watercolor is considered to be the hardest medium, and yet uh, you're e excellent at it. And well, we like to tell the buyers that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a I see. marketing point. Yeah. <laughs> because we like to tell them that uh, you know everything is nearly impossible, and that's why they're so expensive. But now uh, there are a whole bunch of tricks. Now we use for the white, you can use a, a mist kit that you put yes. on. And then uh, Mr. Clean is making a sponge <laughs> that every time you make a mistake, you just <laughs> wash it out with Mr. Clean sponge. <laughs> it makes it a lot easier, yes. doesn't it? Well, we have a couple of your paintings here. Uh, would you like to describe oh, us yes, and tell I'd them love about to, yes. them? Yeah. yeah, we have the one beautiful one. It looks like a farmhouse. Is that? Uh, well, I try, what I tried to bring was two that were very different in, in kind of painting. Uh, this one got an award the other day at one of the shows, and then that one was just a flower vase, and I tried to make it in the very modern way of flat painting. Mm -hmm. See, this one has depth, you can see to the back, but that other one doesn't have much. Well, let's look at them one at a time. The, um, the one with the flowers, tell us about that one. Well, that's the one that, that's what you call flat painting, that you're not seeing the depth of whatever you're painting. And uh, this was a flower vase at my daughter's house. He didn't have a flower in his mouth, so I put a flower in his mouth. Oh, that's <laughs> interesting, yeah. And then another thing about that painting is that, if you notice, it's just two colors. Right. The blues, the white of the flowers, and the uh, centers of the flower. Oh, and, uh, and then to tie it all together, I put a brown leaf up there. Yes. Right. That's, yeah. that's, that's yes, interesting. And it's got that, that touch of brown in the, in the flower, in the center of the yes. flower as well. Yeah. And I, I, that's the kind, you see now, I believe that art, as everything else, has a fashion period, a fashion. Correct. And now we get uh, uh, things off the ships and, oh, and also the uh, catalogs from big societies like National and, uh, and American. And a lot of this stuff is what's being chosen because it's different. Yes. Right. They usually choose a few of this type because and this people like to have that in their homes. The one, is that, is yeah. that snow? Well, I, I call it chores because she's hanging the clothes and oh, yeah, sweeping right. the Oh, I see. So it's more just a summer <laughs> scene. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 Interesting. So what would you say is coming into fashion next? If you've, I mean, you've seen trends, I'm sure, along the way. Well, so I think more abstracts. Young abstracts. people like abstracts. And all of this takes a lot of time and energy because you have to cover the white and all that stuff. And the young people don't want to do that. Where well, now they can come with some acrylic and put, <laughs> them, put it on top of the watercolor. <laughs> but if you notice, when you go to shows of young people, they're mostly abstracts. It's interesting. Which, which are not easy to do at all, you know. No, well, if you're talking about classic concepts of art, like focal point yeah. and really coming up with oh a good yes. composition, One that's of the most tough. frustrating things is for a lady to stand in front of a painting and say, oh, my grandkid could do that. Yeah, right. No. Yeah. I find abstracts much more difficult than buildings because buildings, you know, where the roof is going to go and stuff. But... Um, well, abstracts I find to be very hard. Yeah. I, I've been studying abstract for about three years now, and I thought before I went and did it, oh, I'll do that because it'll be easier, <laughs> but it's not. No, it's not. Now, one woman went into abstracts, but she claimed she couldn't draw, and she did very well. So people that don't draw well do okay. Mm. But composition and center of interest and all that stuff, uh, you, we were speaking of different kinds of paper. They're right. making different kinds of paper now. And like in Yupo, you can use, do some very good abstracts. And, uh, well, Yupo is, is very slick. And so whatever you put on yeah. it, whether it's watercolor or 
ink or whatever, it just yes. runs. So Yes, you paint with very thick paint. And yeah. watercolor anymore, in the abstract, you do use thicker paint. Mm. You don't use as many glazes and all that fancy stuff that right. you used to use. Right. We get, um, again, if, if you're really good, you get international. And that's California. I am an associate member of that. And then if you're really, really, really good, you get into American, which in, is in New York. Wow. And now in there, we get their catalogs purposely mm -hmm. to learn what has been accepted in, in big in shows. In the new yeah. big shows, yeah. 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 And uh, the judges usually, we get judges from other places so that they don't know you. They're not choosing oh, you yes. because you're Susie. They know your name. You because your work is good or isn't. Mm -hmm. Wow. I had one friend who said that uh, she took reje rejection very hard. Yes, you have to make all kinds of fancy excuses when you're painting that what didn't get accepted. Well, <laughs> I, guess, I guess that's true, you know. Yeah. I, I would like funny. very much for all my paintings to be accepted. But all of us would. But they yeah. don't always no, get accepted. No. I mean, when one gets accepted, you get pretty excited. Yeah, yeah, no. But you, you've had a lot accepted. Yes, you oh, have. Yeah. Well, I've, I've been lucky, and I've had a lot of one-person well, one shows, Not too. lucky. You're, you're, yeah. you're, you're very you're good at talented. And, uh, yeah. Helps. I've always played, frankly, played the libraries because of the children, because the children run in and look at the stuff. Right. And uh, I, I'll take, quick, tell you quickly about a little friend I have. He's a deaf-mute, but he's really smart, so I'm working with him so that he has a side thing to do. Right. And he and I write to each other in pictures. Oh, oh my goodness. And, uh, and I have given him crayons, and they make some crayons now that you put it down, and then you can wash it like a watercolor. Uh -huh. yeah. So I gave him a set of that, and oh, he's just having a great time. And for anybody with problems, painting is a great release. For some reason, when you're painting, you don't think of anything else. Yes, it's I mean, like you're meditation. in another world. Well, yes. your decisions are all based on color and shape and size rather than your life, right? Yeah. So it makes it so much more meditative, I guess. We were at a workshop one time in Yosemite, and there was no place to paint. So we had to paint outside of our room, sitting on the porch with the things. To, and it was cold. And when we finished, we looked at our clocks and said, it's been three hours and we didn't know it. <laughs> and that's why I time. think that any painting is good. Yes, because the yes. time just goes by yes. when you're there. And now there are so many mediums, acrylic and oil. Oils are still done. And uh, watercolors and, and the different papers that do say, and that you can. And acrylics are a form of watercolor, right? Different? Acrylics are, are a form, form of watercolor, oh, yes. right? And now you Just can form. combine them. Mm -hmm. You can combine acrylics. You can do the first washes in watercolor and then come and put the acrylics on top of that. Well, but that's kind of how oils are, too. You start in your acrylic to get your basic composition, yes. and then you can layer yeah, the oils acrylics. on top of that. Yes. So, yeah. And uh, they're making it as easy as possible. And naturally, we who paint are all for it. Uh, the competition is very great, <coughs> and people are not buying many paintings the, because their sm houses are smaller, because they're expensive. I have friends who uh, have given me Architect Digest, and those buildings are having and large but they, but they take abstracts, you see, because it's something that if you have to wait, you don't have to get yourself involved in hanging the clothes. Right, it's, right, it's, right. It's there. Would you say that it will be en vogue again at some point to buy art? I mean, you've seen kind of the yes. transitions, right, where it goes from en vogue to not well, and I, back I, and forth. It's so a whole story. I think I was reading an article the other day, and they said that this kind of thing is still very popular in people's homes. Right. But uh, in businesses, and uh, and then that man in California, Lucas, is opening that great big gallery, mm -hmm. and that should be wonderful because he's been buying paintings for many many years, so he has a tremendous variety of artists. Right. And, well, uh, I think art is still a very good investment, original art. Yes. Right. Yes. That's how Sophie, Sophia Loren got rich. Oh, are you serious? It's yeah. Through her art purchases. That's so, amazing. Yeah, amazing. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, I, I told our son that he could take anything he wanted, so he got in the car and he said, well, I looted and it's pretty good. <laughs> <He> drove away. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, 
there is a sale, but I don't like to encourage young people to buy paintings just for investment because sometimes it's very hard to sell the stuff. Yes, for sure. Yes. Yeah. And we don't have a terrible lot of galleries here. We're in Santa Fe, and there's a gallery every mm -hmm. two doors. Yeah, uh, right, right. Mm -hmm. And yet we've got a number of artists here, so maybe that's a missing market. We yes, also have and shoppers that's, that's here. That's why uh, there was a woman here called Lucille Burner who taught us a lot. She was from Kansas. And uh, they're really now really working on trying to get an art museum here. Mm. And uh, I would like it named after her because she really, I don't know if you know what the pen women are. Those are women who write, uh -huh. do music, and, and paint. Wow. And uh, she started that here. It's a national society. And uh, she started the Watercolor Society. Does Myra, Myra? Uh, Costa sound, she's the one who founded the society. Oh, really? And uh, she died at 101. Wow. But, um, Kept her young. Yes. She, uh, I, I'm repeating that I just can't say how proud I am of the society because uh, it's growing immensely. It has the good workshops. It has the good shows. Anybody's interested. Well, it's, it's, it's definitely good. a place where people can go and network with other really good yeah. artists yeah. And, exactly. and do their shows and learn things because the workshops that uh, Nevada Watercolor has well, are just I, I outstanding. Well, I read the other day that when you are uh, new at painting, you try to copy things, mm -hmm. but as you get better and better, you just steal other people's <laughs> ideas. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> but, but the biggie is that when you enter a show, it, it, it's not a copy of any kind. No. Yeah. But no. You did it from your ideas and stuff. Or you, right. can, or you can do from your own photographs, yes. right? Yeah. I have millions and, uh, because of that. And, uh, and yeah, be careful because you're not even supposed to do it from other people. Oh, and there's still a few societies, well, I think there's one in California, who doesn't accept anything but pure watercolors. It doesn't want acrylic, it doesn't want anything on there. And uh, they are very, very strict. Where do you find most of your information about all these societies? Well, so there are lots of mutant magazines now. In magazines, yes. so and primarily they advertise. magazines. And okay. this cheap Joe that sells supplies uh, puts out a special catalog in the early spring with all the that's another thing. You can travel all over the world mm -hmm. because they're going to Italy and they're going nice. to Spain and they're going to Portugal and they're going to the East or Asia, mm -hmm. and it's with a. It's lovely because there are people that are all interested in the same things, and they try to make them not terribly expensive, and I certainly recommend those. They're just to lovely. Do those trips. I've been to Spain and Italy and France and Mexico. Does the Watercolor Society ever organize trips like that for people to go on, or? Uh, no, no, not, they have a few, you know, okay. uh, yep. that they go. And, and what they usually is, that it's a well-known artist, a big name, and uh, you stay in nice hotels, not the very best maybe, but nice, and then they have a workshop all day, and then they have a, a critique in the evening, mm. and they try to go to many places outside of where you are. That's nice. And uh, and if anybody's interested, they can just call the society, uh, call, there is a telephone number for them, that, and they can be told where, but it's As wonderful. well as a website, I'm sure, right? A uh, they, I'm sure they've got a website well, as well. Yes, Nevada yes. Watercolor Society yeah, has yeah, a yeah. website. Perfect. Yes. We had a wonderful woman who set all that up. That's what I tell you that's been wonderful about the new people coming in, because we get our bulletin email, yes. and we get all our notices email, and then we, w when we enter a show, it has to be photographed, and it goes computer-wise. And I have a woman who comes to my Wednesday class and it's open to anybody, and she takes photographs of the paintings, and and they uh, and go in. Now some people, my daughter is a quilt, and she said she can do it, but it has to be very good. And there's another trick that's, that's kind of frustrating. A painting this big and mm -hmm. a painting this big, when it gets on the computer, it's the same size. Yes, <laughs> right. <laughs> and we had one painting that was a desert painting, 
that was just lovely, but we all thought it was a great big thing. It ended up it was only about this big. <laughs> kind of like the Mona Lisa. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> but that's one of the things, and that saves a lot of time and a lot of shipping and mm -hmm. everything, so it's much more efficient. So you've right. seen a lot of changes in the art world since you started. Oh, yes, yes. A lot of changes. It's, it's okay, that's what I like about painting. I didn't have much talent when I started, but because you're always learning something, and you can be 70, 80, 90 years old, and you're still learning stuff, because new stuff is being done, old stuff is being uh, revi rev right. uh, revised or reviewed, and uh, then if you travel, whether in a group or not, there are always interesting museums to go to, and. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you got the wrong person if you don't want somebody. I, I push it all the time because I feel that people of all ages can do it. Right, now where do you get your inspiration for the pictures that you paint? Well, uh, mostly from photographs. Mm. And whenever I go on, picture, on, on trips, I take a lot of photographs. Yes. And I keep them really quite neatly. I keep boxes of Spain and boxes of Italy and boxes of that. And. Uh, then there's another trick that some people do. When you're going to enter a show, you go onto the computer and find all the paintings that that judge has chosen in other shows for the last year. Oh. Good tip. And then tip. send one that, that you think he's gonna, he or she's gonna like. Oh, that's a it's great tip. Yeah, it's kind of a, you know, but, but it, it works sometimes. <laughs> yeah. That's well, right. And, and here, but you do do that because you know more or less the type, if he wants mm -hmm. it very modern yeah. or if he wants, uh, you know, s things that look right. like pictures and stuff. Now, one thing that, that persists in being Im important is drawing. The drawing has to be good, whatever you do. So if you were going to give any lessons to younger people yeah. getting involved in art right now, what would those... Oh, you start by drawing. Start yeah, by, drawing. by drawing. Oh, yes. Yep. The Wednesday morning class wants to do some portraits. So we have spent 10 to 15 minutes every Wednesday drawing mm -hmm. and drawing different ways of taking the human figure. And you'd be surprised how they've improved. Oh. We've done it for about a year now and um, you couldn't recognize the people six months ago, but now you know who it is. And now <laughs> <laughs> they started a little abstract yes, and yes. now we're moving Well, more. we had one model who <laughs> wanted to buy one of her paintings, wow. but she went around the room and came back laughing and she says, they don't even look like me. <laughs> <laughs> but they have improved a lot. So every yeah. Wednesday at the Mesquite Club, and yeah. you're giving lessons is still, that's great. Yes, I give classes and that is all year. What that's time, amazing. What time, what time are, are the classes? Well, my, my way of dying, getting classes is to have a theme every time, like uh, uh, glazes or uh, next week is going to be pouring water, water oh, coming out there. And then I take photographs. They know they have a schedule, so okay, they know. Okay, so they know. You've got so a plan. they can bring anything of their own if they want to. But then I have all these photographs, so I always take a stack of photographs that they can use if they if they want to. And uh, you know something funny about painters? I guess everybody. You put a vase of roses right there, and there are twenty people painting them. And some look as if they hadn't even been in the building. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing, yes. isn't it? And, and I love that because then when they put them up against the wall, uh, they're so different. It isn't it's amazing, funny. right? Yeah. It is interesting. I love seeing. Yeah. We had a class at where Judy teaches. Same thing. We all painted the same thing, and you couldn't believe that they were all related. And the so, colors, don't you find yeah, that the, the colors entirely different? Yeah, we all started with the same color tubes, so I was like, <laughs> yeah. how'd that happen? <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I love it because, uh, and you can also tell how people are feeling to some extent. Exactly, you're right. As soon as they have a problem in life, the colors get quite dull. And uh, I guess you know what mud is. Yes. That's when you put too much paint and mix it and in there. Yeah. The brown yeah. color. Gets and a when you're muddy. not feeling too well, quite often you start <laughs> painting with mud. Mud. Yeah, and that's true. And I think just that art is an expression of what you're feeling yes. generally comes out, yes. right? Well, that's what the really good painters preach, that you should tell a story. That It's a story in shapes. 
and that uh, that you look at a painting and you know what the people were doing, you know how the building had an old barn, what the old barn has been through, and and those are the best paintings, yes, and the ones you can live with for many years, because every time you look at them, it brings you pleasure, and it brings that story back yeah. to you. Yeah. Yes, Mary, we are so happy that you've oh, been with you. us. Oh, thank you. a lot of fun. This thank has you been. Very much. An absolute delight yeah. to and, and get to know you. Anybody who's watching, I'd love for them to get out I and mean, paint. Yes. Not only art history, but Vegas history, yeah. and well, it's and, really. And the, the last thing I want to tell you is a lot of people expect this angel to come and give you a lot of <laughs> talent. That's a bunch of baloney. It's just sit down and draw. <laughs> and draw. Just sit down and practice, right? <laughs> and the That's more you awesome. practice, the better you get. Yes. Right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. This is a lot of fun. Well, Mary, thank how you. can someone get in touch with you? If they, Everyone. How can someone get in touch? with you or come to your uh, art classes? Uh, well, they could, uh, they could leave a message at the Mesquite Club and their telephone number is in the book. Okay, great. And, oh, uh, and if anybody's interested, their meetings are the second Wednesday at 7 o'clock at Spanish Oaks. That's the Nevada Watercolor yes, Society. and they have a bulletin that has all our names in there, right. who the teachers are. And right. that's, that's going to be a, a great society to And you continue. don't have to be a member. Yeah. They just say hello and that's give what you a I cup did, but now I'm going to join. So. <laughs> yes, 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 yeah. Right, yeah. Well, thank so you so we much. We appreciate it so much. It Everybody? really has been wonderful. Thank you so much for oh, being you're welcome. here. This, this has fun. been so fun. fun. We've really enjoyed it. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Thank you. It's been yeah. a real pleasure. And we're in, and we're in, uh, encouraging the city a little bit yeah, to get that's a right. museum and all those things. Right. And go Las involved. Vegas. <laughs> Not just go nights. Go go art. No, go right. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to um, take a quick break. We've had a wonderful time with Mary Shaw, and we hope you will contact her. And if you're looking for a great art teacher, go down to the Mesquite Club on St. Louis. On St. Louis, and that's on Wednesdays at noon, right? Or is it's it? It's Wednesdays, 10 to 12. 10 to 10 12. 12. 10 to 12 on Wednesdays. And so, uh, if you're looking for a great art teacher, that's a good place to go. And uh, Mary, thank you again for being yep. with us, oh and we'll God. be right you're back. Great. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. The golf store you've been waiting for is now open. Bob Allen Golf is ready to help you take your game to the next level. Bob Allen Golf is located at 6415 South Fort Apache, Las Vegas 89148. Choose your favorite clubs from our selection of Bridgestone, Callaway, Cleveland, XXIO, Srixon, Ping, Wilson, and more. We'll custom fit them in our state-of-the-art full swing golf simulator. Come hang out with us and practice on our putting green to find out which club is perfect for you. Have your clubs repaired, reshafted, and regripped in our on-site tour shop. And talk about accessories. Guys and gals will feel comfortable and look sharp in the many sizes, colors, and options of apparel from Greg Norman, Black Clover, Under Armour, and more. The team at Bob Allen Golf takes your game as seriously as you do. Join our online family at BobAllenGolf.com and stop in the store to meet us. Remember, at Bob Allen Golf, your game is in the bag. Welcome back. In this segment, we're going to be showing you how to do some art. Well, yeah, it's, it's abstract art. It is something that anybody can do. It's how you decide to use it afterwards that will take more creativity. Yes, a lot of creativity. Yes. But what I really like about this particular thing is we're using Yupo paper, which is not really a paper. It's like a plastic. And we're using alcohol ink. So we're going to be using three colors of alcohol ink and Upo, Upo paper, excuse my mouth, and we're going to each be making a, an abstract right. for you so that you can see how to do this. You're going to love doing this. This is really, really so fun. So easy. So we're going to use three colors. We'll have, um, and this, a, these alcohol inks, they come in all kinds of colors. They're not just limited to these three, but these are the three that we chose for today. And so we're going to use them uh oh, um, Ruthie, do you have your nutcrackers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you always need a nutcracker. You know what? This is a wonderful tip. So Got if it. you're an artist watching this, <laughs> you're going to need to uh, to see this. She's going to yep. use her nutcrackers and actually open 
this jar. This is the best thing because we always get paint that's stuck for some reason yep. or another. Yep, works on oils, uh -oh. acrylics, everything. Yeah, so having those nutcrackers Gotta is have a, a nutcracker. big help. Okay, so we're both going to do a picture and we're going to end up using the same colors but we're going to end up with two different pictures. So all you're going to do is take one of your colors and start putting it on your paper somewhere that you, you like, however you like. I like orange a lot, so I'll use a lot of orange. And then some green. And you just kind of sometimes need to pick it up and, and let it run a bit, you know, let it kind of like Ooh. rip around. I like it as so you can fast squirty thing. I like doing around the edges because I want the whole thing to be filled up with wonderful color. Oh, I, I was hoarding the green. You want some green? Yeah, do you want the orange? You I got don't it know. already. I'm going to use turquoise here. And drop some in. And what you're going to find really fascinating about this is that the colors, when they run together like that, they create like a little bit of a black outline in between. And uh, you, can, you can run this stuff any way you want to, um, to get a different look. And so uh, you'll see that Ruth's picture and my picture, even though we use the same colors, are going to come out like totally different. And I do mean. I'm going to wiggle the plastic and, and mean, not my paper. <laughs> and I do mean totally different. So this is using um, UPO and alcohol ink. Now I'm having, I'm building a rain, rainstorm. There we here. go. I like mine. Yeah, I like Leaving yours. Leaving it too. right there. I like yours better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> I like yours. Uh, it looks like a rain. It's kind of fun. Ooh, but that'd it? be fun, like to do tree. Look, you do a couple of orange flowers in there. It's kind of like grass in the mist. Oh, okay. Well, maybe I'll throw in some orange. What do you think? Yeah, a, a little, little, little flower here flower and there. there. Yeah, a little orange flower there. Now it looks like a little garden in the mist. Yay! What do you think? I like it. Where this one looks more like the background. Maybe it could be just used as art itself. Or how would you use this? Well, I would I would take that and put it on the top of a little wooden box oh. and glue it down, and you'd have an absolutely beautiful little box with the colored top. Or you could uh, frame that or do several small ones and put them like in your bathroom just to add color to the bathroom, to a color scheme. Another thing is I could write like a, my favorite saying on it, frame it, and give it to my friends. You could, or you know those, uh, plates that go around your light switches. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you yeah. can do this with alcohol ink, too, and they're, they're real creative. And so you just don't have those boring old white uh, plates around your light fixtures and your electric plugs anymore. So it's just a matter of pouring the ink on and uh, then just moving it around a little bit and seeing what you end up with. Well, those are fun. So that's Thank our how-to for today. We'll be right back. Crazy Terry here with your car care tip of the day. So it's not a bad idea every now and then to check your battery. If you don't know how to do it, have somebody check it for you. Just a visual inspection can tell you a lot about your battery. So as we can see here, this battery's got a hold down. It's nice and tight. The cables are on. They don't look bad. We've got a cover. We don't see any corrosion. Everything's kind of tight, looking good. A little bit of dirt, that's normal. But nothing's leaking, no real cause for alarm here. So that's a good sign. Doesn't mean it's good, but at least visually we know that it's intact. Okay, so we're looking at a battery here that shows signs of corrosion. We want to test that battery to make sure it's good. Usually when they're getting like this, there's going to be a problem leaking some acid at the top. We ran the test and we find out it has 396 cold cranking amps, but the battery requires 650. So it's just not enough. The battery is going to go soon. Better to know now than later. Okay, so the benefits of checking the cable is because this cable's rotted out. What we'll find is this is the problem, not the battery. So it'll save you from buying a battery, still having the nose start, only to find out that it's a cable. This type of corrosion is common in diesels. Okay, so we're getting ready to jump the car, but we have to have some battery cables. And we have to check those too before we hook them up to the battery. So here we have our standard set of battery cables. We just look them over, see if the ends are frayed, if everything's connected all right. Everything looks good here. Wouldn't hurt to check the rest of the cable just to make sure the dog didn't get it and chew it up. We have red and black. Red's positive, black's negative. You always want to hook the positive up first and then the negative. And I'll show you how that's done right now. Keep these off 
to the side so they're not touching each other. Hook up your positive. You can find that right here by the plus sign, the negative sign. Plus is positive, red. Make sure that's securely hooked up. Keeping these away from each other, hook up your negative cable. Just got to fight it on there, figure out a way to get it. Wiggle it a little bit so it ensures a good connection. Now you're transferring voltage. If I hit these two together, we're going to spark. Kind of want to avoid that. Won't kill you. Kind of fun. A lot of people think if they can turn the headlights on, the battery's fine. That's not always the case. It takes very little amperage to turn a light on, but it takes a lot of amperage to start the starter. I recommend checking the charging system every oil change. At Sun Valley Automotive, there's never a charge for that. This is Crazy Terry with your car care tip of the day. Thank you for joining us today. We've had a great show. It's been just loads of fun. I really enjoyed Mary Shaw. She was like my favorite. And you know what I love most about her? What? I love that tip where she said, if you're going to enter a picture yep. in, a, in an art show, <laughs> you know, take a look at what the, the judge, judge likes. Like, you know, look at the yeah. judge's artwork and see exactly. what they like and then enter something that's kind of like that. I that's, know. That is, it's so cute. I, it's smart. It is smart, especially if it is winning is your goal. Now if it's just the art for yourself is your goal, <laughs> do whatever you want. But if you want to win the competition, definitely go. It was such a yeah. great tip. It's a great wasn't tip. It? Yeah. it was great. If, with all of life and life is art. Yes. So it's, Ooh, it's, I like that. Life is art. Life is art. You are so smart. Oh, thank you. And I haven't got blue on me. <laughs> With our little demo, see? But we yeah, and it wasn't the demo fun? The demo was fun. I couldn't figure out which way to hold the paper so that the audience could see it properly. And I got green. You've got blue, and I I've blue. got green. I like How do I get though. this off of me? Uh, alcohol. Just regular alcohol? Alcohol ink, ink, alcohol. Just like with makeup artistry, mm -hmm. alcohol palette, alcohol takes it off. Oh, you are just a... These are things Bundle we need to of know. Information. <laughs> Products. That's why I Products love having safety. you here with me as it's a co-host because we're always having so much fun. Yep. So be sure and watch our show and the other shows on www.dbtv.com because we have a great deal of fun and you're going to get a lot of great ideas from from these shows because the art is just amazing. And the ideas and attitudes that you can find are also amazing. Yes. This is our show is here to help you. And our guests are fabulous. So join us again and look at the other shows here, right here on WWDB-TV, and we'll see you next time.